Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. On today's episode of Thinking in English, let's learn how to think critically. Check out the Thinking in English blog for a full transcript of today's episode, and head over to my Instagram page, Thinking in English podcast, for more great English content. We now have access to more information than any other time in history. The internet and social media have allowed anyone, including myself, to express our opinions online. There is also an incredible amount of fake stories, misleading articles, and government propaganda out there. In order to navigate this world of confusing and overloaded information, critical thinking has become increasingly important. The ability to evaluate arguments, examine evidence, and tell the difference between fact, opinion, and fiction is a vital skill. Critical thinking can help you both in work and in your personal life. I'm sure you've all seen friends or family share clickbait, sensationalist, or obviously fake articles online. Critical thinking can help prevent this. And for English learners, like most of you, learning to think critically in English is an urgent and important skill. It is not enough to just read and understand information. You also need to be able to consider whether that information is reliable. In this episode of Thinking in English, I'm going to try and introduce you all to the concept of critical thinking. We will look at what critical thinking is, look at some examples of critical thinking, highlight some tips and tricks that you can all use to improve your critical thinking. I think it's best off to start at the beginning. What is critical thinking? There are quite a few different definitions of critical thinking with many different aspects and intricacies. At the basic level, critical thinking could be defined as the analysis of factual evidence to form a judgment. It is understanding and considering different pieces of evidence, determining which pieces of evidence are factual, and then coming to some kind of judgment based on your analysis of that evidence. Today, far too many people make their judgments on politics, social issues, culture, and much more based on their pre-existing opinions and biases. They don't think about the evidence. People don't think critically enough. However, there is more to critical thinking than that simple definition. Some people, uh, including many native English speakers, misunderstand the concept of critical thinking due to the word critical. Critical has more than one meaning in English, and this is where the confusion often comes in. Critical can mean the analysis of merits and faults, or good and bad, of something such as literature, food, or any issue really that you can have an opinion about. However, perhaps the most common meaning of critical is expressing adverse or disapproving comments or judgments. In that sense, critical means being negative. But this is not what critical thinking is. If you think critically, it doesn't mean that you completely criticize something. Instead, you evaluate that thing's worth based on evidence. You evaluate what is good and what is bad and decide overall whether it is good or bad. For example, think about a food critic. They critically review restaurant food. 
And depending on the evidence, so the taste of the food and the service in the restaurant, I guess, they write a positive or negative review. A food critic could write something incredibly positive or incredibly negative. Another good definition of critical thinking is this. Good critical thinking includes recognizing good arguments even when we disagree with them, and poor arguments even when these support our own point of view. Just because you disagree with something does not mean it is bad, without value, or incorrect. And just because you agree with something does not mean the article or news story you're reading is good. Maybe it's badly written. I often share articles on my social media from sources that I generally enjoy reading and often trust. Usually The Economist magazine, uh, Guardian, The Financial Times, BBC or Foreign Policy magazine. And I quite often get messages from some of my followers saying that I shouldn't share these articles because they are opinion or biased or wrong or, or some other reason. But remember, just because you disagree with what the article is saying doesn't mean you can't read it, and it doesn't mean you can't appreciate the arguments. This is the principle of debating. I debated a few times at high school and university, and in a debate, the two teams are assigned a question over which to debate. But they don't really get to choose their own side. I remember my first debate at high school. Should prisoners be allowed to vote? I personally believe prisoners should be allowed to vote in most cases. But in this debate, I had to argue the opposite. I had to understand and recognize the good arguments, even when I disagreed with that overall position. And that is the basic element of critical thinking. As I already mentioned, our world today is full of constant news, opinions, facts, information, assertions from across the internet and TV and magazines. How do we know what to believe or who to believe? Recently, I had a few clients from China who wanted to study for a master's degree in Europe or the USA. They used an agent to apply and the agent had recommended certain universities. Now, my Chinese clients trusted what the agents had told them, and they believed that the recommendations were good and prestigious universities. But I had to tell my clients that those universities were not very good. They were low-ranked, poor-quality schools. Probably, the agent had been paid by the schools or by some organization, a recruitment organization, to push Chinese students into applying to those universities. Now, if my clients had thought critically about the information provided by the agents, they would have gone on the internet and searched some reviews by themselves, and they would have saved their time and their money and not written an application to those schools. Critical thinking helps us make the correct decisions, the right choices, and to understand the world better. Whether you are a worker or a student, critical thinking is always a desirable skill. Employers want critical thinkers, people who are curious, make better decisions, and reflect on their actions. And students who think critically are the ones who get the best grades. Often if you look at the, we, we call it the mark scheme, the, the how essays are graded, to get the highest grades, the, the A plus or in the UK, the first or in America, the 4.0 GPA, you need to be writing critical essays. So, based on the definitions I've introduced, 
Let's think of a few characteristics of critical thinking. To be a good critical thinker, there are certain skills and traits that come in handy. First, you need to be able to analyse and weigh up arguments. This doesn't just mean whether you, dis- whether you agree or disagree, but whether the argument is relevant based on evidence and how important it is. You should also be able to evaluate the evidence that you see. Something that is becoming increasingly important is the ability to distinguish between fact, opinion and fiction. Often people present their opinion as fact, which is known as assertion, and sometimes people just make things up. To be a critical thinker, you need to understand the difference between these. However, this doesn't mean opinion is bad or opinion articles are bad. Because I think it's almost impossible to not mix opinion and fact. And when we make an argument, we are mixing opinion and fact. We are taking the evidence that supports our opinions and using that to make our arguments. How can we distinguish between fact and opinion and evaluate that evidence? Well, good characteristics of critical thinkers include checking the research methods of evidence and considering bias. Let's say you see an article that says 70% of British people are religious. To review the research method, you need to look at the question. For example, did they ask, are you religious? Are you Christian, Muslim, Hindu, etc.? Do you believe in God? There was a famous statistic in a book published a few years ago um, that that talked about how a lot of British people say that they are religious, but a lot of those people also say they don't believe in God. So depending on what question you ask, you can get a very different definition. Also, who does the article ask? How many people? Was it 10 people from the same church? Or was it a 1,000 people from across the entire country? Also, check for bias in whatever article or evidence you're reading. A few weeks ago, I was reading articles about climate change. And one was relatively positive about the future, which was quite surprising. And when I checked the author, I realised he was an employee of a major oil company. For years, the tobacco industry funded articles that said cigarettes were not bad for your health. And recent articles defending British Prime Minister Boris Johnson have been written by his friends, colleagues and supporters. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't or should read these articles or look at this evidence but we need to think critically about it and about who wrote it and why they are writing these articles and whether their evidence is trustworthy. In essence, a critical thinker needs to understand and analyse the different viewpoints and perspectives and interpretations people have. As a former history student and a current political researcher, my time at university was based on thinking critically. And sometimes, as a critical thinker, you can reach a conclusion that you don't like. For example, last week's episode on nuclear weapons was based on a paper I wrote five or six years ago. Before I wrote it, I was firmly against nuclear weapons and believed it was easy to get rid of them. Just stop using them. However, after reading about 20 books and articles and eight or nine different government reports, I realised that the opposite argument was better. I thought critically about that issue and I came to a judgement or a conclusion that I didn't expect. And this happens all the time, countless times. There are so many issues that I come with a pre-existing opinion 
but wants doing research, reading articles, uh, reading peer-reviewed journals and books, checking the evidence and the sources for myself, my opinion changes because I try to be a critical thinker. If critical thinking is such an important skill, then why don't more people do it? And why is it so difficult? There are some common obstacles or blocks that stop us thinking critically. The most famous is called confirmation bias. Basically, we tend to consider or read things that we already agree with. If you are a conservative, you probably read conservative newspapers. If you are religious, you probably follow people of the same religion on Twitter. It is easy to trust articles that simply back up or say what we already believe. And it's really difficult to believe articles that go against our opinions. And social media is really concerning because they only show us the articles that we want to read, which generally are the ones we already agree with. Other problems that stop us critically thinking include mental shortcuts. For example, rather than thinking fully, we make guesses or similar decisions to previous ones because it's easier. The context of information is also really important. Let's say you love to read the Guardian newspaper and you hate the Times newspaper. Now, if I published the exact same article in both papers, you would probably agree with The Guardian and disagree with The Times, even though they are the same. And this has been shown countless times in studies. If you go to America today and you tell a Republican, some, uh, if you say to a Republican, for example, uh, Democrats support raising taxes, the Republican will disagree with it. But if you say to the Republican, Republicans agree with raising taxes, they probably would agree with it. It's been shown many times because people, you know, we agree, we just think about our own biases. And there are also common fallacies. A fallacy is basically a mistake. And when, we, when talking about critical thinking, it often refers to reasoning that is not critical. This was one of the major problems with articles that uh, criticised Donald Trump when he was president. They described him as an idiot, orange, fat, racist, misogynist. But they didn't really present much critical commentary about his policies. They just insulted him. <laughs> There are a few different tips and tricks you can use to start thinking critically. Think about different arguments, including ones that you disagree with. This is why I always introduce different sides of the argument when recording debate episodes. Even if you disagree, you need to understand the other side. Make sure you understand the facts. Learn the difference between fact, opinion and fiction. As I said earlier, facts and opinions are always mixed together, but you need to accurately and carefully separate them. I see people on Twitter and social media constantly posting things that are not true. A simple Google search will show you that it is not a fact, but most people are too lazy to do that. They just believe what they see. Once you find the fact, decide which fact are evidence and which of that evidence is the most important and which evidence is the most relevant and most significant. Now evidence is not always equal and not always relevant. Think about Russia's war in Ukraine right now. Do we trust the millions of photos showing uh, bombings in uh, Ukraine cities? Or do we trust speeches from Putin saying Russia is not committing war crimes and not targeting innocent people? Now, both the photos and the speeches are evidence, 
But which evidence is more significant? The millions and millions of photos and videos? Or the speech from the President of Russia? Evidence is not always equal. And at the same time, you need to be challenging your own biases. Think about your own opinions, your background, your education, your beliefs. Are these affecting your judgments? Why do you believe what you believe? Are you making assumptions based on your bias or based on real evidence? This is something I have tried really hard to overcome over the last six or seven years. I am white, male, British. I come from the centre of England, from a working class family, but I was educated uh, at normal schools and then elite universities in the UK. My background has characterised my opinions, the way I think. And I, when I'm studying other cultures, which is what I do for my profession, when I'm researching Asia or Japan or Taiwan, I have to remember that these places are not Britain. These places are not of the same background as me. And I cannot take my experiences in the UK and assume that they exist in other countries. And, uh, you know, I've lived abroad for a long time, lived in Japan and lived in Taiwan. And yeah, my experiences in the UK, just because something is true in the UK, does not mean it's true in Japan or true in Taiwan. So once you've done all of this, then you have to make your judgment. Decide what is the most accurate argument, the best option, or the most convincing side of a debate. But do it based on the evidence. Do it based on your critical thinking. Don't just agree with something because you believe it, because of your own bias or your own opinion. Agree with something because you have evidence. So how can you improve your critical thinking? Well, let me give you a few steps. First, be sceptical. Don't believe everything you read, especially if it's from a website you've never seen before, from an author you've never read before, or from a random person on Facebook. Actually, just don't believe anything on Facebook. If you see something on Facebook, it's probably wrong. Instead, when you see an article, or you see a piece of evidence, or you listen to a news report, question it. Why was it written? Who wrote it? Is the information accurate? And is it trustworthy? Second, stop reading trash. Now, this comes back to the Facebook thing I just said, but there is so much trash, rubbish, as a British person like me would say. There are lots of trash websites, terrible newspapers, and sources out there that you shouldn't read. Once you decide something is unreliable, don't read it anymore. Save yourself the time and, you know, just don't read those papers. Don't read those websites. I never read conservative papers or sites like the Daily Mail or Fox News. I also never read uh, liberal sites like Vox or MSNBC. Um, and I try to stick to more reliable sources, sources that tend to have more, I guess, explanation of how they do their research and come to their conclusions. Also, I try not to read things that are government supported. So, so you might say the BBC is government supported, but it's actually an independent organisation. But things like Russia Today or China's Global News or whatever it's called, you know, I can't read that stuff. It's, it's just not independent. It's not reliable. Next, be detailed. When you read an article or you listen to a news report, make sure you are concentrating. Right, so this is you know, you've already decided that it's a reliable source even if you don't if even if you don't agree with it. But while you read it, make sure you're concentrating and detailed. If you listen actively and read carefully, 
you will be able to fully understand what is being said. Too often, people just read the headline, but don't read the whole article. So they don't actually know what the arguments are, and they can't come to a real judgment over whether it's a good piece of evidence to read. And understand other people. You could also describe this as empathy. Our world right now is really divided. People hate each other. But try to imagine yourself as someone with different opinions to you. Think about if you're, lib- if you're liberal, put yourself in the position of a conservative. If you're Christian, put yourself in the position of an atheist. If you're European, put yourself in the position of a Russian. Think about the different points of view. Why people believe certain things. And what other people want. This can help you think critically about your own beliefs and about the issues you are considering. So just once again, the four tips I would give you to be a better critical thinker is be sceptical, stop reading trash or rubbish, be detailed, and understand other people. So here is today's final thought. On this episode of Thinking in English, I have tried to introduce the concept of critical thinking. I described what critical thinking is, some of the characteristics of a critical thinker, why it's difficult, how you can do it, and how you can get better at critical thinking. Critical thinking is incredibly important and is something I try to do every day. I also try to incorporate it into my podcasts. But I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. And I'm constantly trying to become a better critical thinker. Even recently, I have stopped reading certain websites and uh, news pages I used to read every day. And I unfollowed many, many things off Twitter and Instagram because I decided that they were unreliable and they were giving me misinformation. And clouding my opinions. I want to only read the best journalism and stop with all of the um, biased and overly political rubbish that you can find out there on the internet. How about you? Do you have any tips on how to think critically? Are there any news sources you think are uh, especially good to read? Let me know in the comments on uh, Spotify, on the blog article, or reach out on Instagram. Now, I'm always happy to hear from all of my listeners. <laughs>